All right. Uh, you are welcome to um, our next our next um, lecture on complex numbers. Uh, in the last video, we looked at the definition of what a complex number is, um, and we did some examples and looked at what the conjugates of a complex number is. So here, we want to look at uh, the addition and multiplication of complex numbers. Just as you have all these operations uh, under the real number system, like addition, multiplication, division. You want to establish these operations under the complex number system as well. Okay, so you will see uh, some propositions and theorems in your lecture notes about these. Um, I will do a few of them and improve them, and then we'll do some uh, examples of how you add and subtract and how you manipulate and simplify complex numbers. So that's what we are going to cover for this. All right. Um, so given given a complex, let's say two complex numbers, z1. That should be a plus b i or i b, and then z two is equal to c plus d i. So these are two complex numbers, z one and z two are both in the complex uh, number set. Um, the sum of z one and z two is pretty straightforward. Um, so this is going to be a plus b i. This is the first one. And then you add C plus B I. Okay? The second complex number. So what you do is that just add the real parts of the complex numbers and also add the imaginary parts of the complex numbers. This guy is that So this is equal to A plus C plus, I'm going to add this, I'll just factorize the I out. So this gives me B plus B multiplied by I. Okay, so that is basically how you add uh, two complex numbers. So, for example, uh, if z1 is equal to 2 minus 3i and z2 is equal to negative 3 uh, plus 5i, then if I want to add them, z1 plus z2, some of the two complex numbers will just be 2 plus negative 3, so that's 2 minus 3 plus. I'm going to have a negative 3 here, and I'm going to have a 5 here. Alright, so this is basically equal to negative 1. This and this will give you positive 2. Alright, so the sum of the two complex numbers is another complex number, which is negative 1, plus 2i. Alright, how do you multiply complex numbers? Okay, so let's take the same two complex numbers. How do I multiply z1 times? Z2. Okay? Now you do it as you do for, let's say, polynomial multiplication, right? Or binomial multiplication. But you have to keep in mind that i squared, okay? Always bear in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1. So whenever you see i squared, replace it with the negative 1. That is why you should bear in mind. So if I want to um, multiply these two complex numbers, this is basically equal to a plus bi multiplied by c plus bi. So again, I do it as I would do for you know, binomials. Take this, multiply by c, that gives me a c. Take a and this, that gives me a di. Take bi multiplied by c, that gives me b c i. Well, hold on. So I'll take bi multiplied by di. So take care, take note of this. So B and D will give me, of course, B, D. I and I gives me I squared, but I squared is negative 1. So this is minus here. So if I multiply this and that, that gives me minus B, D. Then now you can combine them, okay? Combine the real parts and then the imaginary parts. So for the real part, I'll have A, C minus B, D, okay? Plus. I have a b plus b c multiplied by i. Okay, know that this is real. Okay, it's real. And this is also real. So when I multiply two complex numbers, I end up with a complex number as well. Okay. So basically, that's how you uh, that's how you multiply complex numbers. You just do it as you do for polynomials, and just take note that i squared, you know, i squared is equal to negative one. Okay, so 
So you should always use, okay, well, of course, so we know I squared is negative 1. So let's do this as we move on because this will become important very soon. I cubed will be equal to, of course, I, I cubed is I squared times I, right? But we know I squared is negative 1. So this is equal to negative I. So I raised the power 3 is actually negative I. I raised the power 4 would be I squared times I squared. I squared is negative 1. I squared is negative 1. So this is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive. One. Wow. Okay? Of course, then I to the power 5 will be equal to I to the power 4 times I. We know what I to the power 4 is. We just computed that it's 1. So this is just 1 times I is I. So if you like, well, I is just I. All right? Um, I squared is negative 1. I to the power 3 is minus I. I to the power 4, well, you don't need us, right? I to the power 4 is I squared, I squared is 1. I to the 6 to the 5 is just I. I to the 6 would just be what? We can do this as I to the power 5 multiplied by I. I to the power 5 is I multiplied by I. And that gives you negative 1 again. This is I squared. Okay? So it repeats itself, right? Right? Uh, in cycles of 4, right? So we had a negative uh, 1 here, then 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? <laughs> Later on, you also have a negative 1. So you can, you can play these games and see how it repeats. But you will often need these when you are multiplying complex numbers because you come across, see, i to the power 4 to the power 5 to the power 6, and so on and so forth. So, an example. Let's assume that you have uh, these complex, two complex numbers. I'm just going to take 2 plus 3i, and I'm going to take negative 1 plus i. Okay, let's multiply them. If I multiply the two complex numbers, e1 times e2, I'm going to have 2, 3i multiplied by negative 1 plus i. Okay, so this gives me negative 2, that gives me 2i. This and this will give me minus 3i. This and this will give me 3i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so that is just negative 3. Okay, so that is equal to, I combine the real parts, negative 2 and negative 3, that's negative 5. This and this will give me negative i, right? 2i minus 3i. So the product of the two complex numbers gives me that. So that's an example of how you multiply complex numbers. Good. Now we want to um, we want to prove uh, some three important properties of complex numbers. Okay. Complex numbers. So the first one we want to prove is which we have done briefly actually. Okay, we want to um some propositions or theorems. Okay, that um, if z1 and z2 are complex numbers, okay, then the sum of the two complex numbers is also complex. Okay, so two complex numbers. If I add them up, the result is also complex. Okay. This is refer referred to as additive closure. Additive closure. Okay. The other one is called um, additive additive associativity. T D T. Such say that if I have three complex numbers, Z one. Z2, Z3, then let's have also written as Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. Okay? Okay, so 
it's an associated utility property that if you, you have this in real numbers, this is saying that you also have in other complex numbers. So that is it. And then the final one we are going to look at is that there is the existence of what is called um, a multiplicative inverse. Okay. Um, so this is another important one. Uh, existence, existence of multiplicative, of multiplicative inverse. Okay. In other words, there's an inverse. Okay. If z is complex, it's a complex number. Say so that it's not equal to zero. Then there is. Um, Another complex number, W, such that if I multiply W by, um, there is a W, such that if I multiply Z by W, W by Z, I get 1. So basically, it's saying that if I have a complex number Z and it's not, it's not equal to 0, alright, I can take 1 over that complex number. I can find the inverse of it. So basically, that is, that is what. Okay, so let's uh, maybe let's quickly prove um, one straightforward. This is also straightforward. There's a proof I call in your lecture and we'll switch on that. So we'll prove this one and then we'll go quickly to prove this one as well. Alright? And then if there is uh, enough time, I will do some uh, some examples. So additive closure, let's prove it. Let's prove this. Okay. 